Hey everybody, this is Kathy Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina, and this is Barn Quilts by Mountain Visions. Welcome back to another video. I'm glad you joined me today, and I hope that you're going to like the barn quilt we're going to make today, especially if you're a Little House on the Prairie fan. Now the one we're going to make today, Laura Ingalls Wilder talks about it in one of her books. Her and her mom made this quilt, and they made it in the red, white, and blue. And here is a picture of the magnet that they have at the at the shop. I've never, I'm not at the shop, but at her museum at her house in Missouri. Someone went there and texted me this picture because they knew that my daughter was a big fan. And so the first doves in the window that I made, I made it exactly like this. And that's the one that she has. And I use different colors for the one that I'm going to show you today. But I also got the pattern out of that book that I tell, tell you about, uh, the 5,500. Uh, can you see that without the light glaring on it? It's 5,500 barn quilts, or 5,500 quilt blocks. Not barn quilts, but you can make one out of them. But anyway, in that book, now, when you look up doves in the window, which is what this pattern's called, you'll get all kinds of different patterns. And this particular pattern, called Doves in the Window, is the one we're going to make. And it also, it, it, let me show you the one that I did. And you may, you, these names might make sense to you. Here's the one that I did. And that's the one that we're going to make today. And I'll tell you my colors later. But the some of the different names is birds in the window and airplanes. And I can see that. And then bluebirds for happiness. And then just the bluebirds. And one calls it the dove. Another says four birds. One says four doves. And one, one name for it is actually Four Swallows. So this pattern's been around so long, it's taken on an identity of its own. But I loved it because it, it just had some history to it. And so let's just go ahead and start drawing the pattern and you can make your own. And I'll tell you my colors later. All right, the first thing we need to do is to find the center of our board. So I've taken my 24 by 24 board that I always draw on, and I'm making an 18 by 18 inch today. That's what that was that I just showed you. So I need to find the center of my board. So I marked it. I got my ruler on the edge of my paper and marked it at nine, and I I came over here and I did the same thing. Lined my ruler up and marked it at nine. So then when I came back here and I lined it up, I found my center. And and that's what you got to do with these. Most of these quilts, you've got to find your center. All right. Now, when I was making this, I have to show you some. You know, I'm not that organized. And when I was when I was figuring out the measurements, I had this puppy pad down here because I was going to start painting. So I just wrote my measurements on the puppy pad. <laughs> so I'll give them to you again in writing if you need me to. But the the, the, our first set of lines we need to make is 12 inches. So I'm going to put my ruler 
well, I want to make sure my line is straight. So I'm going to line my ruler up and I'm going to put my tip, my ruler right on 10. So I need 12 inches. So I'm going from 10 to 16. And then I'm going from 10 to 4. And that's my 12 inches. Okay. You know, I probably need to make that line a little bit darker for you guys to see. Let me do it in purple. So I put my, I put it again, I put it in ten, on 10, right at that tick mark, and I went from 4 to 16, that's 12 inches. Now see, you could have done it like that, but then you may not get it just exactly straight if you don't do it that way. So I've got another tick mark here at this 9, and another tick mark at that 9. And I'm going to do the same thing. Get it lined up. I'm going from 4 to 16. Okay. Now, I'm just double checking this thing here because I didn't write this down too much. Well. Um, so now what we need to do is get, I, I, went, I got a yardstick now. I, I had that two foot ruler, 24 inch, but now I'm, I got a yardstick because I want to get right on that corner and right on this corner, so my lines are going to intersect right here at that center point. And and I'm just I'm at 13, so it don't really matter where you are. Just add six to it, and that'll be 19. And take away six, and that will be seven. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> So let's put it on 13 again so I can confuse y'all even, even more. So all I'm doing is making these lines are 12 inches long. And you've got to intersect that. So it's 19 and 7. So you see you'll have one, two, three, four. You'll make four lines that are 12 inches long. It just does not work with this particular pattern to make an eight point star and divide your sections by three. The doves don't come out right. You want to know, you want to see proof of that? Look at them wonky looking doves. You see they got broken wings. They look like killdeer instead of doves. But I divided these sections all in the same with the same measurements like an eight point star and that's what <laughs> that's what came out. Poor little thing. Well, we're not gonna do it again. We're gonna do it right. All right, so let me get, let me get the green and here's what we're going to do now. So you see this line and this line. We're going to 
take our yardstick or 24 inch ruler and you and I've lined them up see so I'm gonna draw it down I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna do the same thing and it looks like that we're gonna draw that eight point star But it, it don't turn out, if you try to do it that way, it don't turn out right. So now I'm just lining these up again. I guess this is how people make eight point stars sometime, but there's easier ways, I think, to make that by like blocking it off. But you, you can't block this one. Tried it, can't happen. Well, I couldn't make it happen. <laughs> Okay. All right, see, now we've got our eight point star. And that would make a beautiful quilt right there. You just, you could make two different colors, you could make four different colors, or eight, and that'd make a beautiful quilt. Here's what probably need an orange so it'd show up. Here, this is the tricky part. Not hard, but it's just tricky. These short lines here. Yeah, these short lines. So in your corners right here, all four corners, those need to be divided into three sections. And the way the math comes out, it's 1.58 inches. So like 1.6. And so I've got my I found 1.58 on my ruler and I'm and I wrote it in permanent ink. And that black mark there is another measurement for another day. But I just wanted to show you what I've done. So I'm measuring it. All of these. And I'm dividing it into three sections. And each section is at 1.58. So, you see what I did? I got another measurement for that other line. I got messed up. So you would think that you could just measure those out, but the lines are not the same. When you get through drawing it, your lines are not, this line is different than this line. It's a longer line than that. And that's why you can't just say, well, I'm going to measure them all the same. They have to be equally divided into three sections.
Now it's, again, it's the ones that's on the corner. All right, now for the other ones that's in your triangle here, that needs to be at 1.75. So you won't have any trouble finding that. It's just one inch and then three fourths. So it's 1.75 or one and three fourths. And that's, the, that's that other mark that I had. And we're going to divide each one of those in three. So these lines are longer. So like this line, this line is four, four and three quarters. But this line is five and one quarter. That's why your measurements are different. Okay, all right, now we got, it's starting to look like a Christmas star. We've, we've got these lines, right? So we're going to put our ruler back in here, our 24 inch ruler. And each one of these lines are going to be, we're going to um, put a tick mark every two inches. So there's that one, and then eight, and 10, and 12. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Well, zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Two, four, and that's six, eight, 10, and that's 12. Two, four, and that's six, eight, ten, and twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. All right, now look what we got. We're almost done. So here's what we do now. Change pen change colors, right? So let's let's just go use this one. Let's just start right here in this one section. And so you see the tip mark these two tip marks and these two. All we're gonna do is line our roller up. And we're making those lines. Now, see how uneven they are? That's what drove me crazy, but that's okay. And now we're just going to connect the other two. All right. Now let's just go, go around it. these see how these intersect each other or they meet they meet together they don't intersect
look here. We finished. That's it. Once you get those measurements, every t every two inches on your 12 inch marks, on these side ones it's 1.58, and on these long ones it's one and three quarters, 1.75. Now here's how you find where the doves go. I usually try to turn it on point and you can just kind of see it better. You can see your pattern. So let's just take this block here. All right, here is the... You wanna go ahead and take a screenshot of that before I start messing with it. I said screenshot. I said it right. Woohoo! 400 times I'm finally getting it right. Okay, so right here is our first little dove. I'm coloring this in so you can, I won't do them all. I'll just do one. So that's the top of his head. Over here, Okay, wait. That's the top of his head. Let's do his wings last. And then here is his body. And I did, I did his head and his body in the same color. So what you end up with right here, see, is a diamond shape. See? You might want to take a screenshot of that, too. All right, then I actually used a lighter shade of the same color for his wings. So I'm not sure how I can do that for you. Here's another orange, but I doubt it'll be the same. But it, anyway, if it's different, you'll see what I'm doing. Here, here's his head. Okay, you're in the next block now, the next diamond shape over. And here is his wing. And then go over to the right, you're in the next diamond shape. And there's his other wing. And this is what gives people trouble if they try to just make a regular Lone Star. It's not going to come together right. All right, so there's his body, and there's his wing, and here's his tail feathers. So you'll see that I use different colors for his wings and his tail feathers than I did for the body. All right, you want me to do one more? So the one beside of it is this one. We, and see, we won't be drawing a dove here. You skip one and draw a dove in the next one. And we'll make this one a blue one. So here is his head. Here's his body. And see, I, I just taped all that up at the same time. Okay, there you go. There's his body. All right, so now the wings tips are going to meet. Here is his wing. Then here's his other wing. We went over into the next block.
And then here's his tail feathers. Okay. Now, I put um, three coats on everything except for the bodies and I used four coats on there because it just didn't seem like it was getting dark enough. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do two more just in case you didn't get it. But if you want to flip like uh, fast forward to get to the end, you can. <laughs> But I'm going to show you these, this section right in here, too. All right. So let's do this again. All right. Here's the bird. We skipped this one. And now we're right here. And he's going to be orange. And there's his body. I'm just doing this real quick so y'all can y'all can take a screenshot of it. Alright, now see here's here's his wing. It's gonna meet at the tip of that wing. And we're going into the next section right here. And I'm gonna show y'all what I what I try to do when I get through with this. And I'll show you my paints. I'm going to tell you what I tried to do, but I, it didn't turn out like I had it in my mind. One way, and it didn't turn out that way. So we're going to skip this one. We're over here. You see the two orange birds are meeting at the, at the point. Now, and our blue birds... Again, you make your doves whatever you, color you want it to. I'll show you mine in a minute. And then here's his body. Just going down to and then up to. And then here's his wings. Let's see how them wings come out just right? If I hadn't have done that weird. So, I, the camera said something weird. I don't know where I was at when it stopped. But you see this section right here? I tried to make that a different color. Here. I tried to make these blocks a different color. And... Well, like here. You see these? You see that on the magnet? That's the way I did it for my daughter. Well, on here, I tried to use another color and it was so distracting, it just would not work. But it was a beautiful color. Let me show you. See how that color, see how pretty that color is with all these rests? The, all these rests. <laughs> see, you see it better like that. See how pretty that color is? It's ancient burgundy. And it just looks so pretty with all the rest of them. But when I put it on there, it was so distracting. I couldn't stop fretting over it, so I painted over it, and I like it a lot better. <laughs> All right, let me show you. Well, let me let you take another screenshot. And just remember, if you want to try to put something different in there, you can. And then I used the, I just used the gray for my background. Let me get the bottles and I'll show you what I, the colors that I use.
Okay. This color is called Blue Nile Teal. And that's a weird, I know that's a weird name if it's blue. If it's called blue, but it's, it's actually a teal. So Blue Nile Teal. And what I did, instead of worrying about going to buy more paint, I put a little white in that and lightened it up. And so that's my wings and his tail feathers are a little, just a shade lighter than that. A couple shades, actually. And I did the same thing for the uh, coral. This is called Coral Reef. And I just lightened it up for his wings. All right, for the white... I used pale bloom and then for the gray I used metropolis now all my paints all these paints happen to be Valspar season flex that that's my favorite kind to get that season flex mainly because the court is a lot cheaper than some of the other ones but I love them all but um, I, I like Season Flex. I just like, I like the way it goes on and everything else. But I'm not sponsored. That's just my opinion. But here's that ancient burgundy. And I'll try to remember to put a link in the bottom for the bottles too. Uh, you just go to lolevethe.com, put in Kathy 10 and get 10% off. Again, I'm not sponsored. I just... Uh, asked for a code and she's she's sweet enough to give me one so you can try that burgundy color if you want to but here you go you take a screenshot of that and you'll have your colors but again you do your colors the way you want to maybe you can see it better there Okay, there you go. Take a screenshot here. All right. So I'm losing my daylight. It's getting late in the evening. And with all the rain, it's getting darker earlier. But I uh, did want to thank you all for joining me. And to let you know that any of the uh, barn quilts that you've seen me do, all of them are available for purchase. Just, if you saw one lately that you like, and I'll try to put them on another video um, another day, but if you've seen any of them that you like, just email me at kathyrtaylor10 at icloud.com. I think I have my email address in the description as well but anyway I had a good time doing this and I'm not sure um, who will end up with it but I, whoever or whomever ends up with it I hope they love it as much as I do and I'll see you all in the next video